Thank you for joining us here at the Pastoral Center today for the press conference to announce the newly appointed Bishop of the Diocese of Metuchen, Reverend Monsignor James F. Cecchio. Please join me in welcoming to the podium the Most Reverend Paul Gregory Butkowski, who faithfully has served the Diocese of Metuchen for the past 14 years as our Chief Shepherd. I am relieved. <laughs> and happy, I'm very, very happy, because of the man who is going to take my place, who I respect and know that he has great credentials and he's very personable and a very warm and very smart person and a man of God. And so for that reason, it's easy to say I'm relieved. My dear friends, I want to thank all of you for coming out today to join me for this historic moment in our local church, where it is my privilege to help announce the appointment of the fifth bishop of the Diocese of Metuchen. I thank members of the news media for your presence today. I welcome my brother priests, deacons, clergy, religious, and diocesan staff members, along with representatives of our Catholic schools, Catholic Charities, Diocese of Metuchen, the Catholic Center at Rutgers University, and St. Peter's University Hospital, who are all here today. With gratitude to our loving and merciful God, and to our Holy Father, Pope Francis, we welcome our new bishop, Reverend Monsignor James F. Cecchio, who most recently served as rector of the Pontifical North American College in Rome. The appointment of Bishop-elect Cecchio by Pope Francis was announced at the Vatican today at noon, which is 6 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. <coughs> this appointment continues the apostolic succession of bishops in our diocese, which began in 1982 with our first bishop, Cardinal Theodore Edgar McCarrick, <coughs> followed by Bishop Edward Thomas Hughes, Bishop Vincent de Paul Breen, and myself, and now Bishop-elect Cecchio. During his papacy, Pope Francis repeatedly has urged Catholic bishops and priests to go out amongst their flock and know the people they serve, like shepherds living with the smell of their sheep, saying God's grace comes alive and flourishes to the extent that clergy are among their flocks, giving themselves and the gospel to others. <clears throat> this I ask of you, you must be shepherds who smell like your, like your sheep. As I look at the mission of serving others and the vibrancy of the American seminary in Rome, where our new bishop comes from, it seems these men indeed are learning how to be shepherds living amongst their flock, their sheep, with the smell of their sheep because they are intimate with those they serve. As a priest of nearly 50 years, it's very heartening to see this new generation of priests taking our Holy Father's message to heart, and it leaves me to believe we are going to be in very good hands with our new shepherd, Bishop-elect Cecchio, leading the way. Plus, he's a Jersey guy. <laughs> so I am a little biased because I, too, am a Jersey guy. This month marks my 14th year as Bishop of Metuchen. Throughout these years, it has been an honor and a privilege to serve the faithful of our four county dioceses and to work with some amazing people who have been ambassadors of Christ, who truly are the face of God to others. Please know that I am grateful for all your support and I am confident that Bishop-elect Cecchio will benefit from your kindness, your generosity as well. Bishop-elect Cecchio, on behalf of the Diocese of Metuchen, 
Welcome to your new home. We look forward to getting to know you better in the coming days. And we look forward to your installation on May 3rd. As you assume your new role and take on your new responsibilities, please be assured of our continued prayers for you. Oh, it is good to be home. Home is home. And I'm looking forward to making this my home uh, for a long time. So it's a pleasure to be with you. So good morning. And praise be Jesus Christ. I'm a little embarrassed with the Catholic News Service video being shown as an introduction to our gathering this morning. That video was made in my final days in Rome as I finished 10 years as rector of the North American College on February 1st and began a sabbatical, which was to run until July 1st. <laughs> I had hoped during my sabbatical to spend time with family and friends, to go on retreat, and then to do some writing on seminary formation that I was asked to do, and finally to study Spanish in preparation for becoming a pastor in my home diocese of Camden. As of last Monday, those plans have changed. I was in rural Minnesota with some lay and priest friends, and unbeknownst to me, my cell phone reception was not so good, and all my calls were going directly into my voicemail for a couple days. When I finally realized that something wasn't right and I checked my messages, I discovered that Archbishop Vigano had called and left a message, the Apostolic Lincio to the United States. So when we arrived at the rectory where I was staying, I slipped into my bedroom and called the Archbishop back while my friends were waiting in the next room, in the living room. We were to go ice fishing that day. The Archbishop, aware from past discussions uh, that I desired to return home from Rome to serve in my diocese and to be nearer to my family, after some discussion, he said to me, Monsignor, it's good you did come home from Rome, for I'm happy to tell you that Pope Francis has appointed you as the Bishop of Metuchen. After we hung up, I immediately knelt down next to my bed before a crucifix and before an image of Our Lady, I said a prayer to her for the priest and faithful of this diocese and to ask for her protection and her assistance to me. I then got up and joined my friends and off we went ice fishing. I pray that I will be more successful as a bishop than I was at ice fishing <laughs> that day. My primary work these past 12 and a half years, as you saw in the video, has been informing seminarians so that they can serve as effective parish priests here in our beloved homeland. I know that the parish is crucially important in the life of the church. And as I was leaving Rome myself, I asked my bishop if I could return to parish work. It never occurred to me that I would be asked to be pastor of a parish this big. I'm grateful for the Holy Father's confidence that I will be able to shepherd this vibrant church of over 640,000 souls, and I very much look forward to working with and supporting the good pastors, priests, deacons, religious, and lay ministers who are already laboring so well in this vineyard. St. Augustine once defined the office of bishop as an office of love, as it is the bishop who is to give certainty that the pastoral charity of Jesus Christ is never lacking in a church. Touched a bit by holy fear, I certainly am humbled to become the shepherd of this wonderful diocese, and I look forward to striving to fulfill the demanding task of ensuring that the pastoral charity of Jesus Christ continues to be abundant here in Metuchen. I promise you my prayers and my commitment to serve to the best of my abilities. I learned after my ordination to the priesthood that although ordination brought many, many graces with it, it didn't infuse the perfection of the virtues. And I imagine ordination to the Episcopacy will be the same. So I am very much aware of my own deficiencies, but at the same time, encouraged to be taking on this office during the great Jubilee of Mercy. I'm likewise inspired by the wonderful example of our Holy Father, Pope Francis, who sets such a high and challenging standard for us. I've been reading everything I can find on the Diocese of Metuchen, and I know that it's still a young diocese. 
35 years this upcoming fall. Now this young diocese has a baby bishop to go with it. So I'm very much going to be depending upon your help and your prayers. In particular, I'll be grateful for the advice and support of Bishop Paul Bukowski, who will be close by and who has led and loved the people of this diocese for the past 14 years. So again, Bishop, thank you for your leadership, your good leadership, and your loving care of this diocese. I have a lot of gratitude in my heart today, as you can imagine, and I'd like to offer a few words of appreciation. I love being a priest, and I'm so grateful to God for his call to the priesthood and for his love, his calling me to be with him and to follow him in his priesthood. I'm also grateful to God for the grace he has given me over these 23 years, which has sustained me in being faithful to my priestly promises. I'm grateful to my mom and dad for the gift of life and for teaching their children what love looks like in a daily basis. I'm thankful as well to my two sisters and my brother and their spouses, as well as my six nieces and nephews. I count it a true blessing to be in a family of love, encouragement, and patience. Extended family and friends so often take on this role for us too. And I've been blessed with an abundance of these. I'm grateful as well to the church, the church which has nurtured me in the faith over all these years of my life. Except for my years in seminary, both in formation and uh, on the faculty, I've lived in the Diocese of Camden all my life. There I was blessed with a great home parish, St. John's in Collingswood. I attended parish grammar school there and was educated nearby for high school at Paul VI High School. In all those years of Catholic education, I had priests, sisters, and lay teachers who encouraged and nourished me. As a matter of fact, at St. John's, I often heard of the good and generous Mercy Sisters speak, about their, speak lovingly of their community and mother house, which is here in your diocese and watching. So it's nice to be at home with them here. I'm grateful to that local religious community and to the many others who were involved in my formation over the years. The Filipinis, I know who you have some in this diocese, taught at my high school. Uh, and the Felician sisters, who I got to know serving in a parish with them, who are also up here. I've also been blessed with good priest mentors, especially from the Presbyterian in Camden and from the faculty, past and present, of the Pontifical North American College. Exceptional men of God who helped teach me how to be a pastor and a shepherd. We've had great bishops in Camden, and I consider it a real privilege to have had the opportunity to work closely with a few of them, seeing firsthand the necessity that the bishop be a man of prayer and a man of communion, in close friendship with the Lord, especially given the challenges involved in shepherding a diocese. In particular, I'm particularly grateful that the recent bishops of Camden have allowed me to become involved in the work of priestly formation at the North American College. That experience of working there has deepened my love for the priesthood and the church, and has certainly enriched my own priestly life and ministry, as I, along with our exceptional formation faculty, shepherded the over 250 generous, dedicated seminarians of the college, the 78 priests who were there for graduate studies each year at the Casa Santa Maria, and the 33 priests who would come on sabbatical each semester. I have no doubt that the daily inspiration I received from them has been a very unique preparation for me for this new ministry here with you. As I prepare to begin to serve in this beautiful diocese, I ask for your prayers, and I'll certainly be depending upon them. I pray that we may together build up this portion of the people of God into an enduring, and convincing sign of the kingdom for our church and for all the world. So thank you and God bless you. Um, well, certainly over the past years of formation work, St. John Vianney is the patron of priests. I mean, he certainly was, uh, was one. And, and I happened to be in Rome during the year for priests that Pope Benedict had, uh, where week after week, you know, we had such rich um, talks on the priesthood, uh, which certainly helped shape my uh, priesthood and um, 
Tom Danny was, of course, a big part of that year, too, and, and often preached about. So probably, probably has been he over these past 12 and a half years. So before that, it was different, you know, but I think probably it depends on what you're doing. So I'll be, I imagine maybe now St. Francis is going to be my. <laughs> 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 we have my middle name is Francis and Pope Francis and your cathedral's Francis, so I probably should, uh, should work on adopting him a little more closely, I think. <laughs> you know? Oh boy, lots of things. Um, so he asked about, um, sorry, he asked what was my favorite saint uh, last. I don't know if everyone heard or not. And then this time he asked um, someone in particular that inspired me to be a priest. You know, there's so many different factors that, that go into that. You know, the inspiration, uh, certainly my family and their devotion to the faith um, through our parish and our school uh, growing up uh, was a big part of it. Uh, their friendship with the sisters and the priest in the parish. A cousin who was a priest in Philadelphia, I had. Um, an aunt who was a Dominican cloistered monastery. So I'm delighted to see you have a Carmel here. I was going to try to stop there last night, but it closed at five, so it was closed before I, <laughs> I, before I, uh, before I arrived. But um, I had an aunt who was at a Dominican cloistered monastery up in Syracuse, New York. You know, and visiting her annually, we'd go up, our family would go up to visit her, and um, seeing the joy and the happiness and the effect of living in close relationship with Christ had on people, you know, it left a lasting impression on me um, as a child. Um, so my own parish priest, of course, um, and then during the seminary time, you know, I had so many good, uh, my, our rector was wonderful, you know, in Rome. There's so many different inspiring people, you know, that helped. So I, I wouldn't name one particular person, but it's probably a complexus of things, you know. Certainly I'd say my, my family, my aunt, um, parish priest. Any other questions? Well... Um, I told my parents when um, they're down in Florida right now, so my family all lives within five minutes of my parents in Collingswood, so my whole extended family is right, right there, but in the winter they get down to Florida for a couple months uh, down to Venice. So they're down there, so I knew um, they wouldn't be here today. So I called them on, um, uh, today's what, Tuesday? So I called them on Sunday. I thought, let me get them before they go to Mass. I called them early on Sunday morning. My mom said, oh, we went last night. <laughs> <laughs> I said, well, I'm calling to ask for extra prayers, you know, if you and Dad. And she said, for what? And I said, I'm going to Metuchen. And she said, for what? <laughs> As bishop. And she said, oh, my. So uh, she was happy and da-da-da-da. And then I, you know, oh, we'll be praying for you extra. And blah, blah. It's my dad. Uh, today, today, uh, today's March 8th is my father's mother's birthday. She's deceased, long deceased, but she was in her 90s when I was ordained. And... Um, so today's her birthday, so my dad said, oh, it's been announced on Grandma's birthday, and he started to, you know, choke up, you know, and, uh, which is, uh, I was happy to have this today, to um, have her here in a special way, and my other relatives that have gone before us that I know uh, are here with me, too, um, uh, joining us. So, uh, so they were excited. And uh, I didn't tell my, my, my siblings, uh, yesterday on the way here, I stopped at my sister's house to run off my talks. I didn't have a printer at home, so... Um, so I spilled the beans last night with her. My other two siblings I didn't tell, so they're going to be upset with me. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so, you know, you, you're not, you don't speak about it until it's the announcement time. Um, so keep it as quiet as possible. Sure, um, sure. I know, I know most of the bishops in New Jersey. I, I was here at Bishop Paul's installation uh, here in, uh, in Metuchen years ago before I went away to Rome. Um, certainly, certainly to all the bishops to not well, but to, to, to speak with, you know, and to, um, and I know the great work uh, that's going on in the church in New, New Jersey, too. Uh, just this morning, I reading in the newspaper about that Pew study that was done. I don't know if you saw the story this morning. Um, <laughs> so maybe it was funny that I was in the Midwest for the day of the announcement because they compared New Jersey to the Midwest. I think that's the first time that's ever happened in the world, <laughs> history, the history of New Jersey. We've been compared with the Midwest, but uh, um, I was, I was, I was encouraged by the, by the Pew study, really, that 50, over 50% of people that they interviewed pray every day. Over 50% are working on developing their friendship with Christ in some way every day by, by taking some time to pray. I um, mean, it said 35% go to some kind of religious service once a week. I mean, we'd like it to be 100, of course, but I'll take 35, you know, and we can, we can work on that, you know, um, as, as you have been, and we'll continue working on that. So, I mean, I know... I thought that was really encouraging for the state of New Jersey. We rank 17th in the country. We'd like to work our way up to number one, but 17 is pretty good, you know, considering the challenges that we have in this area. And you know, um, you see that 
in the states around us, even in the study, came out lower. You know, the, the secular pressures are high, but the people of New Jersey are obviously from this Pew study, and as we know from our experiencing and living with them and knowing them, uh, loving, godly people. So, I mean, uh, so sometimes we get a, uh, people go bad in New Jersey a bad rap about things, and uh, this is certainly not something that we should be proud of, you know. Um, although I, I'm not sure, you know, Kansas and Iowa, we rank even with them. It's pretty amazing, you know. <laughs> so, but uh, I know there's lots of good initiatives going on in the state to encourage that developing a friendship with Christ. And I think anything that we can do as a local church to, to work with our people um, and the other bishops in the state to help people develop their friendship with Christ, I mean, that makes all the difference in the world. Um, I was thinking about, you know, you, you, get, you get different tasks, you know, you have to start thinking about all of a sudden that you really hadn't thought about that much. And one of them is to come up with a motto. You know, you come up with a fiscal motto. So I haven't really decided yet, but um, on my retreat a couple of weeks ago, I was up in the, the Bethany Center up in um, St. Petersburg. I went and spent some time with my family down in Venice, and I went up to St. Petersburg for a week retreat. It's a beautiful retreat center. And uh, one of the passages that stuck out in my mind while I was there was be reconciled to God from 2 Corinthians, which is funny because that's from uh, 2 Corinthians is where Bishop Paul's mottos come from too. But be reconciled to God. Um, we become, God's working on reconciling the world to himself, and that's why he sent his son. The son makes us his ambassadors uh, for reconciling the world to us, forgiving our sins and reconciling us to God. So be ambassadors you know, uh, of reconciliation. So, so I'm thinking about that, be, be reconciled to God. And then this, this Sunday, that was the reading you know, for the, for the Mass when I was praying on Saturday, and I, I saw that, I thought, oh, maybe, that's, maybe that's to be it, you know, since it was kind of part of my retreat, and then it was part of my, my holy hour on, on Saturday. I thought, maybe that's, maybe that's part of my, um, I think so. Anyway, I forget where I started talking about that. But <laughs> <laughs> I'm usually not so long-winded, so sorry if I am being today. <laughs> I, I think probably first is uh, just the size of the diocese, 640,000 people. It's, it's a huge diocese, and I know there's um, Bishop Paul's been bragging about all the good help he has through the priests and the, the ministers, lay ministers, and the religious, um, the deacons. So I mean, I know there's tons of help, and it's not all on my shoulders, but it's a lot to try. You want to. I mean, Bishop spoke about you know getting to know the sheep, and the Pope's encouraging us, you know, to know the flock. So I mean, that's going to be the biggest effort. Obviously, uh, initially, is just um, seeing who it is that I'm called to love, you know? So, um, so that's gonna be my first challenge, you know? The second challenge is to figure out uh, the sporting teams up here because <laughs> we never had to do anything except root for the Philadelphia teams in Camden, you know, they're right across the bridge, that was easy. We didn't have any choice, you know, you just kind of put your hat on and you went. And I was the chaplain for the Philadelphia Eagles before I went to Rome, I was their chaplain. <laughs> so, I, so I had to figure out what the choices are up here. I have a soft spot already for the Giants because uh, uh, I married the, um, the defensive coordinator, uh, Steve Spagnola and his wife. I married them 10 years ago at St. Peter's Basilica in Rome. So I've been friends with him a long time, them, uh, Marie and he, so, so I have a soft spot for the Giants already. So I think it's going to be easy to start rooting for the Giants. <laughs> and I've got to figure out uh, what all these other teams are, the whole list, you know, of, uh, of choices. So I think that's the, the challenge that I have immediately. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Loving Father, our hearts are full of gratitude for the good you do for us each day. Especially this day, we're grateful for the gift of faith. We're grateful for the gift of your church. We're grateful for the ministers that you send to your church, especially the, the priests this day. I'm thinking of uh, particularly Bishop Paul, the ministry that he's given to this diocese uh, over the years, and the past shepherds too. But all those who minister on your behalf here, reconciling the people of Metuchen to yourself. Strengthen us, embolden us, Set us on fire with greater love for you. Make us wise and give us the strength we need to do your work. Bless all the families of this diocese and people, especially any who are struggling at this time through any kind of hardships that they're experiencing. Give us eyes and ears to, to see and hear uh, what we can do to assist them. I ask you to bless especially the youth of this diocese we ask you to bring them closer to yourself. Continue to reach out to them and open their ears to hear you. 
And then, loving Father, we ask you to call more men to answer uh, the call to your priesthood or help more men to hear the call that you're giving them to respond generously with the gift of their lives. We ask all this and trusting in these intentions all to you through our mother. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. The Lord be with you. Almighty God bless you, the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.